Welcome once again to the Romans 10:17 podcast where faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And I'm glad that you joined us for the second part of this two-part episode on discipleship. It's going to be a great opportunity for us to share some time together in fellowship. And again, reminding you that these are very special times for me. And I appreciate your taking the time and making the decision to join me here on the Romans 1017 podcast. And as a reminder, some of the things that we're going to be talking about in this episode are going to be fantastic application examples of the Great Commission, being a loving mentor, guarding your tongue, bearing fruit, and so much more in this second part of our two-part episode on discipleship right here on the Romans 10:17 podcast, where faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Thanks for listening. When friends betray you. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd armed with swords and clubs sent from the chief priests and the elders of the people. From Matthew chapter 26, verse 47. Walter was a well-known mechanic in his town. When he started his own auto business, he hired several other people to work with him. One of these people was Todd, a young man that seemed lost and lacking direction. Over the next two years, Walter mentored Todd. He taught him how to change tires, install radiators, and fix worn-out brakes. He invited Todd into his home, welcoming him to his dinner table. He even considered the younger man the son he'd never had. Then came the day Walter discovered his business accounts had been emptied and Todd had left town. Walter was upset about the financial loss, but even more than that, he grieved for the close relationship he'd lost. Betrayal is inevitable. At some point, you will be sold out. It might be a friend who gossiped about your marriage troubles. It might be the spouse who cheated on you. It could be the co-worker who took your project and didn't share any credit. You're not alone. Jesus knows what that betrayal feels like because he stood in your shoes, and unlike others, Jesus won't abandon you in your time of need. God, I need strength. I've been betrayed and my heart feels bruised and broken. I feel alone and sad. I need you. Please wrap me in your arms and comfort me. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Ordinary people. When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. From Acts chapter 4, verse 13. Peter and John were headed into the local church or temple one day when they saw a lame man calling out to those passing by. In the name of Jesus, the two disciples healed the man. For their actions, they are called in front of the religious council. They spend the night in jail before being dragged to a large meeting filled with rulers and teachers. When they ask for an explanation, the Holy Spirit makes Peter bold. If we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame and are being asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel. It's by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you Heal. From Acts chapter 4, verses 9 and 10. It's after this speech that the rulers realize the two men have spent time with Jesus. Even though Peter and John weren't learned scholars, their experiences with Jesus had equipped them to do his work. You may not come from the right family, you may not have the best education, you may not be extraordinary, but God can still use you just like he did with Peter and John. God, I want to reflect Jesus. Let me shine his kindness and grace everywhere I go. I make this simple prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. The Back of the Boat Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out with them walking on the lake. 
When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. From Matthew chapter 14, verses 25 and 26. Peter had just started to drift to sleep when one of his disciples nudged his shoulder. Look, look at it. I think it's a ghost walking right on top of the water. What do you think, Peter? Before Peter can make a guess, the figure calls out to him. It's Peter's Jesus. Eager to be with his friend, Peter asked Jesus to give him permission to walk on the water too. Jesus replies with one simple word, come. In this story of Peter and the waves, most people focus on Peter or Jesus. They're the central characters. But did you ever stop to wonder about the other disciples, the ones still in the back of the boat? What did they do when Peter stepped out in faith? Did they encourage or ridicule him? Did they cheer or say, don't get your hopes up? It can be hard when we see someone else stepping out in faith. A friend's finances just aligns so that she can start the side business she's always dreamed of. A co-worker gets pregnant even though you've been trying for months. A relative gets the opportunity to travel the world this year while you're stuck on bed rest. These situations can be upsetting when you're the one sitting in the back of the boat, but it's important that you take the time to cheer each Peter along. Anytime someone steps out in faith, you can choose to celebrate with them. That doesn't mean that you don't hurt or that you don't grieve. It simply means that you're choosing to trust God in the middle of your own stormy seas. God, it is hard when I see other people getting the things I desire, but give me the strength to celebrate with the Peter in my life. Grant me the peace of knowing that even though our roads may be different, we are both still held securely in your hands. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Celebrating Children But Jesus called the children to him and said, let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly, I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. From Luke chapter 18, verses 16 and 17. Charlie spent years as a stay-at-home dad. He loved getting to spend every day with his daughters. He enjoyed taking care of them and teaching them. But some people in Charlie's community looked down on him for this. They said that he should be busy providing for his family instead of raising strong daughters. Troubled, Charlie sought advice from an elderly friend. His friend shared Luke chapter 18 verses 15 and 17 with him. If you're not familiar with that passage, it was just another busy day in ministry. People were swarming Jesus and his disciples were attempting to make sense of the chaos. Maybe that's why the disciples wanted to send away the little children. They even went so far as to rebuke the parents who brought them, as you can read in Luke chapter 18, verse 15. But while they were busy doing that, they totally missed Jesus' heart for little ones. Jesus made time for the children, welcoming them to come to him. He didn't mind listening to the coos of a baby or kissing a boo-boo on the knee of an eager tomboy. He celebrated children and loved on them. God, when I'm tempted to dismiss children or parents who are raising them, let me remember the story of Luke chapter 18. I want to embrace kids and parents with the same joy and kindness that Jesus did. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Mentor for a season. I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. From Philippians chapter 1, verses 3 through 5. Michael spent six months working as a manager for a local auto dealer. Then he was let go without warning. The dealership owner was having financial problems and could not afford to keep paying Michael's salary. Even after Michael got another job, he was still curious. I loved working for that company, and I couldn't understand why God let me work there if he didn't intend for me to stay. Then one evening when Michael came home from his new job, 
there was a letter in his mailbox. It was from Denise, one of the women he'd mentored in his short time as manager. She explained that she was a single mom and living on government assistance when I hired her. She was so grateful that I'd given her a chance to better her life and her family. She told me she prays for me every day. As soon as I read that, I understood. God had called me to mentor her, and when my work was done, he called me somewhere new. God, sometimes I don't understand your ways, but wherever I find myself, let me be your faithful disciple. I want to draw people closer to you. In Jesus' name, I make this prayer. Amen. Letters of Love First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you because your faith is being reported all over the world. From Romans chapter 1, verse 8. When Mary was growing up, her mother insisted that she write one handwritten note a week. It could be a letter to a friend, a thank you card to a grandparent, or even just a scribbled missing you note in my dad's lunchbox. The habit stuck with her in her adult years, and she still writes dozens of notes each year. But as time has passed, Mary's lost track of all the notes she's written and the words she shared. Recently, Mary reconnected with a high school classmate on Facebook. The other woman sent her an instant message thanking her for the note she'd received. You may not remember it, her friend typed, but your words really helped me. On the anniversary of the day my dad died, you slipped a beautiful card into my locker. I'd been feeling so alone that day, and even when I think about your message today, it brings tears to my eyes. Thank you for taking the time to write me. God, sometimes I'm tempted to believe that I'm too busy to reach out. Please help me to slow down and look for opportunities to bless someone else. I want to be your hands and feet in this hurting world. In Jesus' name, I make this simple prayer. Amen. Angel in Disguise My command is this. Love each other as I've loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. From John chapter 15, verses 12 and 13. Cynthia's son was just four when he was diagnosed with cancer. Overnight, Cynthia's world changed. She spent her time taking him to the doctor, fighting the insurance company, and comforting her child. When she cared for her son, the next-door neighbor, Jackie, helped out. She took the family meals, cleaned their home, and babysat Cynthia's other children. When the family van broke down, Jackie loaned out her sedan without a second thought. Now, Cynthia's son is in remission. He's a happy sixth grader who loves soccer. When I think back to that time, I always remember Jackie. She was a true disciple. The moment I brought a need to her, she found a way to meet it. When a friend's child is in the hospital, it can be hard to know what to do. You want to help, but you don't want to add to the burden of stress the family is already dealing with. Here are a few ideas of what you can do. Do check in regularly, knowing that someone cares is priceless. Do track important dates. If the child has an upcoming medical procedure, mark your calendar so you know when to show up. Do listen when they need support. Some parents may need to vent or cry. Reassure them that you're there and you care. Do look out for the other kids. Young children may not understand why their brother or sister is getting all the attention. Even something simple like a stuffed animal or special dessert can comfort a scared sibling. God, when I see a family in need, give me the wisdom to know what to say and the courage to take action. A simple, humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you again for spending this special time with me on this episode of the Romans 10:17 podcast. I'm glad to have this time with you. Every Wednesday, I will deliver to you a new podcast episode, sometimes devotional stories, scripture studies, Christian living examples and points of view, Bible studies, and so much more. 
Here's a small preview of the next episode you'll find here on the Romans 10:17 podcast where faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I'd like to talk with you about being thankful. Shift your focus with gratitude. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. From 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. It's easy to give thanks when your day's going well. You're wearing your favorite t-shirt. You got a great parking spot. Your coffee is the perfect temperature with just the right mix of sugar and creamer. You get lots of likes on the selfie you posted to Instagram. But what about those moments when things aren't going so well? You spill your coffee on your jeans. You have to wait in a long line of customers at the bank or a grocery store. You realize the battery in your smartphone is dead. In moments like these, giving thanks is difficult. But giving thanks is also essential if you want to navigate these experiences with a positive outlook. This doesn't mean being phony or pasting on a smile no matter what. Rather, it's about taking a moment to shift your focus. Instead of grumbling about the long line of customers, thank God for the cashier and pray for her family. When your smartphone needs a charge, thank God for all of the amazing technology you have access to. Choose to turn the uncomfortable moments in life into thankfulness. God, when I'm tempted to complain and grumble, help to stop and shift my focus. I want to be someone who lives in continual gratitude. Let me never lose sight of the blessings you've poured out on me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. That's the next episode on the Romans 1017 podcast. I look forward to being with you then. Now, back to our current episode, and most of all again, I say thank you for listening. Disciples as Sermons Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I've set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. From John chapter 13, verses 14 and 15. During the Passover meal, Jesus paused to wash his disciples' feet. This action might seem odd to those of us who live in the Western culture, but to those living in biblical times, the act is significant. Many people in Jesus' day wore sandals while others may have walked barefoot. Given that these areas were prone to dust and sand, a traveler's feet could become very dirty in the course of a day. Hosts who welcomed in relatives and other guests would often provide a foot cleansing. Some hosts would offer a bowl of water, while others might instruct a servant to do this chore. By doing it himself, Jesus sent a message that his disciples were to be humble. That means thinking no task is beneath them or that they are worthy of some great honor. Instead, every true disciple of Jesus is to be servant-minded and always ready to care for others. Are you sometimes tempted to think a certain task or chores beneath you? Maybe you think you shouldn't have to load the dishwasher or clean the bathroom. Perhaps you believe you shouldn't be the one to finish that report at work or pick up the litter from the street. Rather than think this way, embrace a servant mindset. Don't merely do what's required of you. Go the extra mile. Let your faith be seen in this, that you're willing to do any task, no matter how seemingly trivial. God, I don't want to be deceived by pride and arrogance. Help me to be a humble servant that delights in performing even the smallest of chores for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. The Great Commission. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20. Brian and his wife bought their first home together last year. He was excited about the tiny house, even though it needed a long list of repairs before they could live in it. 
So he began making a list of everything to be done, from the carpet that had to be replaced to the locks that had to be changed. Brian was careful to note every detail. Then he called his friend Toby, who was a handyman and had previously worked in construction. Brian expected that he'd give the list to his friend and simply pay him when the work was completed. But rather than accept payment from his friend or do the work, Toby took time to teach Brian how to handle the repairs. He taught him how to install kitchen cabinets fix an electrical socket, and set up an alarm system. By the end of the project, Brian had a lot more knowledge about his house and felt equipped to handle future repairs. What Toby did for Brian is what Jesus wanted his disciples to do. He wants you to take others under your wing and mentor them in faith. Then when they encounter problems later, they'll know what to do because they had a faithful disciple to guide them. God, I ask that you send someone I could pour into. I want to be a true mentor and disciple to someone in need. I ask this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Preparing Apollos When Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they invited him to their home and explained to him the way of God more adequately. From Acts chapter 18, verse 26. Aquila and Priscilla were a husband and wife team who believed in Jesus. They were tent makers by profession and good friends with the Apostle Paul. They had followed him to Ephesus, where they heard of Apollos. According to the Bible, Apollos was well educated and he knew the scriptures. He was always a passionate speaker in the local church or synagogue, but some of Apollos' theology wasn't correct. When Aquila and Priscilla saw that Apollos did not fully understand the gospel story, they welcomed him close. They invited him into their home and they explained the scriptures so his message would be more accurate and true. The result of this discipleship is that Apollo would eventually go on to have tremendous kingdom impact in Achaia. When he arrived, he was a great help to those who by grace had believed, for he vigorously refuted his Jewish opponents in public debate, proving from the scriptures that Jesus was the Messiah from Acts chapter 18, verses 27 and 28. When you see a Christian who does not fully understand God's word, it's important that you humbly correct them. By doing so, you may be preparing the next Apollos. God, give me eyes to see those who need someone to disciple them. Let my words be kind and encouraging toward them. Show me how to be a godly mentor. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. A loving mentor. Likewise, teach the older women to be reverent in the way they live, not to be slanderers or addicted to much wine, but to teach what is good. Then they can urge the younger women to love their husbands and children. From Titus chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. Melody and her husband had only been married a few months when he lost his job. They couldn't afford their apartment rent from the money she made as a waitress, so Melody moved into her in-law's basement. The further strained her already tense relationship with her in-laws. No matter what she did, Melody felt like she couldn't do anything right. Her in-laws made decisions for her and treated her like a child. Finally, the frustration got to Melody. On her break in the employee lounge of the restaurant, she started looking up divorce attorneys. As she debated on dialing the number, Edith, who was the newest employee, came into the lounge. The older woman asked to sit at Melody's table. The two of them began talking and discovered they liked some of the same activities. When Edith asked Melody about her relationships, Melody blurted out the whole story. Edith asked to pray for Melody and encouraged her to stand strong. Over the coming months, when Melody had a marital problem, she sought out Edith. The older woman was faithful to offer her grace and kindness. Years later, Melody's thankful she listened to Edith. My husband and I have both grown a lot. We have two beautiful daughters and our marriage is good. It took a while to get to this place. It was Edith's encouragement that helped me through it all. She was a loving mentor. God, help me to take a genuine interest in my co-workers. Show me how to encourage and love them as your disciple. 
In Jesus' name, I make this humble prayer. Amen. Wisdom from Spiritual Leader Now you have a king as your leader. As for me, I'm old and gray, and my sons are here with you. I've been your leader from my youth until this day. From 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 2 Samuel had been a prophet of God for years. He had faithfully served the nation of Israel for decades. His hair was gray, and his eyes were tired when the people of Israel brought a new request before him. They wanted a king, just like the surrounding nations had. Samuel's distressed about this and prays to the Lord. And the Lord told him, Listen to all that the people are saying to you. It's not you they have rejected, but they have rejected me as their king. From 1 Samuel chapter 8, verse 7. Samuel goes on to warn Israel about what will happen to them when they have a king. They ignore him until he calls down rain and thunder from heaven. Finally, they admit they're wrong, but they do nothing to fix it. They still pick a king and allow him to reign. Often mature spiritual leaders have deep wisdom that they're willing to share. Don't be like the nation of Israel and reject their advice. Instead, Pray over it and see if God confirms what they have told you. God, please surround me with spiritual leaders who are mature. I want to follow your path, and that means listening to the wisdom from those you've placed around me. Let my heart be humble and willing to hear. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Guarding Your Tongue David longed for water and said, Oh, that someone would get me a drink of water from the well near the gate of Bethlehem. From 1 Chronicles 11, verse 17. David was safely in a stronghold, looking toward Bethlehem, where the Philistines had set up camp. Then he remarked about the sweet, pure water that came from the well in Bethlehem. Upon hearing this, David's elite warriors immediately set out on a journey. They traveled through enemy areas just to bring a flask filled with water from Bethlehem. When they present it to him, David refuses to drink the water. God forbid that I should do this, he said. Should I drink the blood of these men who went at the risk of their lives? Because they risked their lives to bring it back. David would not drink it. From 1 Chronicles 11, verse 19. It's easy to underestimate the impact of your words. A simple remark, a word muttered under your breath, can influence those around you even if you don't realize it. Part of being a follower of Christ is learning to guard your tongue and speak words of truth and grace. If you mess up like David did, be quick to own up to it and ask for forgiveness from God. God, open my eyes to the impact of my words. Let me speak only truth and grace over myself and those around me. I make this humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. The Romans 1017 podcast is sponsored in part by the publishers of the Christian audiobook, Please Just Talk With Me. Stories, prayers, scriptures, and thoughts God has been waiting your entire life to share with you. The topics of conversation you can have with God are truly endless. In this Christian audiobook, you'll discover that you can talk with God about healing, understanding conversation and prayer with God, forgiveness, extending grace, honoring motherhood and fatherhood, finding peace, and so much more. You can find your copy of the Christian audiobook, Please Just Talk With Me, from your favorite audiobook retailer worldwide. Just go to the retailer website and search the title, Please Just Talk With Me. A great gift for yourself or anyone you know who needs to have a conversation with God. Courtesy of the publishers at Positive Life Audiobooks and the Romans 1017 podcast where faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, back to our episode that we're listening to today, and thanks again for joining me here on the Romans 1017 podcast. Bearing Fruit They will still bear fruit in old age. They will stay fresh and green. Rebecca lived in a small farming town in the Midwest. 
To attend college, she had to drive almost two hours one way. The commute was hard, but Rebecca's mother had arthritis and sometimes needed help at home. One day, as Rebecca was coming from college, she missed the exit on the interstate. At first, she didn't realize there was a problem, so she continued on. She finally pulled over when none of the signs were familiar anymore. She glanced at her GPS device, but the cloud coverage was making it difficult for her to get a signal. So Rebecca grabbed her smartphone and called her grandfather instead. The elderly man had been a delivery man for five decades and he knew the surrounding area as well. So when Rebecca asked for directions, he was able to quickly get her on the right path home. For Rebecca, the experience was eye-opening. It was the first time I realized how valuable it was to have a relationship with someone older than me. My grandfather was able to guide me because of his years of experience. Is there someone in your life that you could guide? Just because you're aging doesn't mean you're no longer useful. There are many ways that you can bless younger generations. God, I want to bless those who are younger than me. Let me be a faithful guide who points others toward you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Well, once again, we've come to the close of another podcast episode on the Romans 10:17 podcast, where faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Thank you again so much for sharing this time of fellowship with me. I hope this, as well as all of the episodes, gets you thinking and gets you growing in your personal relationship with Christ. As always, if you have questions, ideas, thoughts, or want to know more, I encourage you to talk with your church pastor, priest, or minister to learn more. If not, maybe you have a Bible-believing Christian mentor you can talk with. Ask God in humble prayer to guide you to the answers to your questions, and He'll show you the way every time. I do look forward to being with you again, sharing the faith and Word of God with you on the next episode of the Romans 1017 podcast, where faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Be blessed.